Hi, I'm David Cooper from ePianos, and today I've got to show you a Yamaha CVP307. Now, the CVP series are the versatile ones. They have rhythms, recording, loads of sounds that mix together, and um, they're a really nice piano to play because the bass speakers are much richer because they have to cope with all the bass of the rhythm section. So the CVPs are very versatile. The CLPs are the other ones which don't have so much of the features. So we have a big screen. We have a nice ridge of speakers underneath that make it uh, a very rich sound. A big cover that's got all the buttons built into it. And when we close it down, we can see it's got everything hidden away now. But it's all the instruments are in the, the panel here. And um, the instrument uh, 307 is one below a model called the 309. The 309 had wooden keys in a gloss finish, and that was top of the range. This is the one below, so it gives you a matte finish. Um, there's a little bit of a gloss to it, but it also gives you um, plastic keys. Now, that's not a big problem. Most pianos are plastic keys um, in the digital series until you get right up to the top of the range. The difference is... Um, you've still got 88 keys, it's just that on the top model they've actually got wood just in the white keys, um, but these are all plastic. It please plays really nicely and what they've also done is the, the bottom keys are made to feel heavier, just like on a real piano, and the top keys are a lighter touch um, because the strings are lighter and the hammer action is less for those strings. So it does feel very much like a real piano to play. Now let me show you some of the features on it. Okay, so the CVP-307, as you can see, is all laid out around this big screen. It's like almost a, an iPad in the middle here. And the screen has buttons around the outside, which allow us to select from anywhere on the screen. And along the bottom, there are um, two rows of eight, and they are controlled from these two rows of eight here. And they often work for things like volume, but they can use to turn on features. Or if we're recording into here, we can turn the tracks on and off as we're playing them back as well. So the screen is of a good size and we've got a contrast. We can adjust it so the angle you're looking at is the clearest. On the right hand side is all the panel of voice categories. So pianos, strings, brass, woodwind, organ, they're all on this right hand side. And on the left hand side, we can control the, the rhythm and the accompaniment section. So unlike a real piano, this has loads of electric gizmos to make it more fun to play and we can choose the sound so every sound has been sampled from the real instrument so if we go first of all to the what it's trying to be a piano we can go to the piano section and we get 10 categories um, 10 choices but there's actually more than 10 there's page 2 of 10 more and page 3 of another 9 so there's 29 different pianos in that main section so if we start off with just a standard grand piano really good sound isn't it so we've got a really good grand piano sound but there are lots of samples different pianos manufactured by different people all sound a little bit different so they've kind of got that covered by different so we've got a mellow piano here which is much softer we've got a honky-tonk piano got things like a bright piano uh, a rock piano so we've got lots of different piano sounds we've got an octave piano which gives us two notes playing every time I play one So it gives us all these effects. Now in the piano section we've also got other percussive instruments. We've got a harpsichord. If we go to page two, we've got a um, uh, grand harpsichord, which is like an octave. We've got, um, on page three, we've got some mixes, pianos with other instruments, piano and strings. 
particularly nice. piano with a choir. So that's just the first section, that's one button on a piano and that's the piano type of voices. Now we've also got electric pianos and these are great, uh, a little bit more modern music. Some other ones here, we've got a, a phased one where it puts an effect on it. So these are all electric piano sounds. Now, as we go through, we've got guitars, so we can go to fantastic acoustic guitar sounds. If we go to the um, the nylon guitar. Got a jazz guitar. The steel one is one of my favourites, it's a really good crisp sound. Let's turn it on. In the same section we've got other percussive instruments like mandolins. We've got some um, funky guitars. So the Stratocaster sounds. And if we go through them we've got blues. Twelve string. Clean electric guitars. Just loads and loads of sounds, and they're all different styles. And I'm only showing you a little snapshot of them. Uh, string sounds are beautiful on here. We've got orchestral strings. strings on here is just a um, it's called live strings and it's got different effects in it um, we've got a, a symphonic strings and we've got one called slow strings that comes in really sweetly So all the solo instruments, so we've got violins, a cello is fab, so really really accurate sounds and we've got other things, we've got solo instruments like saxophones, we've got trumpets as well. So some really good instruments built into it. Now that's the, the instrument side and we can have two on at once. There's a little section and we can decide whether you want one voice or two for the upper part of the piano keyboard. So we can mix any two together and that will give us a nice combination. If you like what you've made, you can then memorise it into one of these buttons and that will then store in 
a snapshot of everything that's turned on on the keyboard so that when you come back to it, if it's saved in, you can use it at a later date. And we can have literally hundreds of settings of your own favorite settings in these buttons. So that's the registration memory. So we can, we can use the voices anything we want, but there's also a feature where Yamaha have given us one touch settings. And every single style in the rhythm section can have four variations of choice that we might want to go into. So if we're not that thoughtful as to what we want to mix together, Yamaha have got some great ideas. So let's go into the rhythm section now and have a look and we'll see how the rhythm section gives us choices of sounds. So in the rhythm section or the style section we have um, different ways that we can trigger those chords to play. So my method of playing is I play a three finger chord or a four finger chord in the left hand and that will give me a backing. So if I go into the and we've actually got a piano pianist backing. So if I go into my piano section, I've got over 30 different piano type backings. If I go into one, let's go into one called um, Slow Rock. Now I'm going to go into Arpeggio 3. Arpeggio 3. When I play my chord with my left hand, it gives me that intricate left hand um, accompaniment from just the notes that I'm playing. And if I play my different chords, it changes with my chords. Okay, now every um, style that I can choose, in this case the Arpeggio 3, has four different versions of that little backing. So backing A gives me... goes up and down again. B different combination. C and D. So if I was playing the piano, I personally would find it quite hard to be able to do those rhythmic patterns while I'm playing with maybe a melody as well. So this will help me. I can play just a single chord or a, an octave and a chord and that will give me that backing in the background. Now I've got it set to something called multi finger but some people who play the piano might be more of a right hand chord player so we can set the um, variation so I can trigger off that chord that's playing from my right hand instead of my left hand so if I go down to full keyboard I can play a chord up here <laughs> right, let me put the piano back still follows on with me. Now if I play single notes in between, it doesn't change the accompaniment, but as soon as I play three notes, and I could play a bass note at the bottom, so we can get a full backing from deciding on where we want to play our chords and what style, whether we're playing in a piano style or whether we're playing keyboard or organ where we play a left hand chord, which is what I'm most comfortable with to show you the instrument. So we're going to some of the other backings now. We've done arpeggio three uh, and we could play along with that. We can bring in the intro section and that will give us a good intro for that particular style. <laughs> my backing now something else I can do I can go into number B C or letters B C or D and it'll give me different instruments so if I go to B now gives me a saxophone. Let's go to C. And D. So 
no, I've got a full accompaniment coming through just from that one style still, the Arpeggio 3. Now, every single style, there's hundreds in here, all have those variations, and they all give me a choice of sound from this one touch setting. So let's try some other rhythms and give you an idea what we can get out of here. One called Stride, this is one of my favourites, and this is a, a piano sort of stride backing, but again, I don't need to do that with my left hand, I can get the accompaniment. So let's have an intro. Too. So we've got lovely choices of clarinets and saxophones and trumpets as well as our piano but the chords are triggering off that bass accompaniment and we've got intros and endings. Let's go into some different ones now. We've got one called Piano Boogie. This is like the sort of Jules Holland backing which I definitely can't do in my left hand so let's put that on now. Really good intro. We can also slow it down, so if that's too fast for us, we can just bring the tempo down and make it a bit more comfortable to play along with, so it's not always too fast. We've got things like piano swing in here. And they're great backings. If we go to another page, we've got rock and roll here. So this, this piano section is very, very good for keeping that left hand strong while we're playing along or learning to improvise in the background. Let's go to a different one, it's a nocturne. That'd be a more classical one. Let's play a chord there. There's our backing. good backings. Now this is the piano section so it's all focused around being based on the piano left hand. Let's go into one of the other uh, sections. Um, pop and rock, okay. Let's try 60s guitar pop. I'll put my intro on. Very different sounds. Okay, we'll try some more. We're going to, um, um, we've got one called Britpop Swing here. This is a great uh, sort of 80s one.
good backing. Now, this is just another section. This one's called uh, Pop and Rock. Let's go into another one again. Let's go into um, Swing and Jazz. Okay, so I'll go into Swing and Jazz. Classic big band's a good favorite of mine. So we'll put that on. Introduction. Bigger introduction. sounds again. We'll do a couple more. Let's go into acoustic jazz. to play and it's, it's bringing out your musicianship because you've got to make some experimental choices to how the song is going to come out and using the styles and the accompaniments just adds another dimension to your playing. So let's try uh, another style section here. We're going to uh, moving and show. We've got a great one called Annie Fant um, An Animated Fantasy and if I play this one now have an intro. Big big sounds. sound again. Uh, let's go to one more. We'll do um, some of what we've got in here. We've got one called um, Movie Panther. This is the, the Pink Panther theme. So we'll put that on. Okay, so we've seen we've got loads of really good styles, loads of really good sounds, and any combination you want to put together you can, but there's lots that are pre-programmed to make it very, very easy to get a good sound and a good overall experience. Now, Okay, so we've gone through most of the features of this instrument. We've got a fantastic rhythm section, accompaniment section that can be either piano-based or um, bass and drums and accompaniment-based. We've got very, very good voices, in all the different sections. Um, we've got three voice sections, two for the right hand upper section, and we could have a lower voice along with our rhythm and accompaniment section to fatten it out. This is where we record our best settings. So if we've got a, a choice of sounds that work together or with a style or something, we can record those in and they'll be stored away for us. 
and um, we can use a USB stick if we want underneath to store these so we can take them out and put them into a computer and manipulate them more in a software package or print them out onto sheet music. So there's lots of things that we can use around this instrument which are quite quite modern really and um, quite available. Now we've got one more thing here called a music finder and that gives us a list of I think it's 1500 songs and it will set up the whole instrument for a specific song as well. So very very powerful. So this is the Yamaha CVP 307. It's very very versatile. It has 88 keys the same as a full piano. It has all the rhythms and the sounds and it's very good fun to play because it enhances what you're playing with really good voicing and really good styles and the rhythm um, the recording section just makes it even more fun because we can play something in and overplay alongside that so do consider this Yamaha CVP 307 because it's one of the high models in the range it outdoes something of this price range that's brand new and you'll get a lot lot more for your money and um, it will give you a great piece of furniture but also some great fun enjoying music on it. Hope you found this video useful. I'm David Cooper from ePianos. Check out our website for more details.